Good evening, and welcome again to the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America and the Canadian Orthodox Broadcasting System. Uh, we've been asked to discuss a number of subjects, and I had promised, first of all, to say a little more about what deep structural fear actually means. And after that, we're going to talk about the mythology of the rapture, where it came from, who invented it, and what it actually means, instead of what uh, it's purported to mean. Deep structural fear, in a clinical sense, or a clinical definition of it, is a kind of fear that penetrates the mind and becomes really fixed, or a fixation within the mind. Now, this is not one of the sort of natural fears that, that people have. Uh, for example, the fear of a grizzly bear if you're hiking in the woods and you hear a noise. That, that, this is more of, a that's more of a natural fear. Uh, a deep structural fear, uh, the, the only one that occurs regularly within human beings, would be the fear of death. And this, of course, is why Christ delivered us or gave us freedom from the fear of death in order to liberate us. But deep structural fears are any kind of fears that become a fixation within the brain and enter in and can actually uh, alter the structure of, of portions of the brain. And we, we perhaps would discuss that somewhat later, but anyway, this is the clinical definition of a deep structural fear, one that penetrates deeply into the mind and can actually become frozen in, in the brain, involving, of course, the R complex or the amygdala region, and uh, can become a psychiatric illness. But when we talk about a deep structural fear in a group, uh, a religious body, or a culture in a society, then we're talking about another kind of bondage. There can be a, a kind of fear that so penetrates a society that the society becomes uh, paranoid and becomes uh, really aggressive toward the thing it fears. I think one of the best examples in our own era is the paranoia in the governing uh, bodies in, in Iran. There is uh, an almost hysterical paranoia, and it's been borne out by a number of people who have come from Iran and from people who have been in prison in Iran. And uh, this deep structural fear in the Iranian government and in the uh, uh, ultra-conservative aspect of Islam in Iran, which includes the, uh, uh, the group that called the Home Guard or the uh, Guardians of the faith. And this kind of a fear leads to people who are suspected of some kind of deviance from the most rigid form of the faith, or from the um, absolute control of the small Islamic body over the state, to be imprisoned and tortured, and almost always on false charges. It's very seldom on something that's really been done that these people are imprisoned and, and tortured. Uh, a slight um, suspicion being denounced by one or two people. Something like during the French Revolution, during the terror, a person denounced by three people would be sent to the guillotine. In Iran, a person has only to be denounced by someone as a spy or a counter-revolutionist or something to be hauled into prison and tortured. And this is not simply because, this is not because the leadership in Iran have become uh, evil in the strict sense of the word, but that they have a deep structural fear in the society itself. That is, the uh, ultra-conservative Islamic society. Now, we see this also among ultra-conservative Christians. And this is the part that I wanted to touch upon the most. A deep structural fear is so contrary to anything that Jesus Christ taught us. And yet in many societies, certainly in a vast portion of the society and our southern neighbor uh, down in America, 
and in ultra right wing or just what we call right wing Christian groups or fundamentalist groups. And this deep structural fear uh, is built up over two centuries, over two centuries now, because the United States was founded by Puritans who came to America because of their own deep structural fear. And we saw how this fear played itself out in the witch burnings in Salem, and also in the way the Puritans treated the Baptists by driving them completely out of the community. I believe they then founded the state of Rhode Island, if I remember correctly, as a, a refuge for themselves, somebody named Williams or something. And uh, it, it seems that that's what happened. Now, for Orthodox Christians to fall into the same deep structural fear really constitutes a loss of an authentic faith in Jesus Christ. When we fear uh, a certain body of people uh, to the point that this penetrates our very being. But this deep structural fear in society and culture is really what underlines many of the wars that have been fought and many of the very worst, most cruel and hideous deeds that have been done. It would include the Spanish Inquisition, which was based on a deep structural fear and which exterminated people for being Jewish or heretics and often for being Muslims in Spain. The same deep structural fear was something that penetrated Adolf Hitler and which he was able to convey to the whole nation by rousing uh, and stirring up a deep structural fear in very much the way that modern televangelists, using the very same techniques as Adolf Hitler, are stirring up and have fed into a deep structural fear in American society. Now that this has sort of leaked through into the Orthodox Church in many, respect, in many ways, in many places, this is something that we have to be very careful and very much on our guard about within the Orthodox Church. Deep structural fear leads to hatred, and then to malice, and then to a murderousness. And this is why so many people in uh, the ultra-right, or the right-wing conservatives, Christians, are in favor of something as anti-Christian as the death penalty. Why we have people in our government, and in the American government, and who have been so penetrated with this societal or cultural deep structural fear that they've condoned the torture of prisoners in uh, Guantanamo Bay. And the, the Canadian government has been totally complicit in turning over prisoners in Afghanistan for just rank torture. And it has to do with the deep structural fear of the religious right within the Conservative Party of Canada. So we want to be extremely careful in the way we apply our, the surrounding culture to our orthodox faith, because we can destroy the orthodoxy of ourselves, our parish, and our communities around us by absorbing the deep structural fear that exists so profoundly in the culture of the United States and also in elements in Canada. And this is something that I had wanted to address so earnestly and with such a plea that we be on our guard against it. You cannot absorb this deep structural fear from the society and the culture around you and maintain the orthodox faith. You can become a hypermoralist and suggest that Hypermoralism is what the Orthodox faith is all about. But then we become like the legend of the Grand Inquisitor, where Christ returns and the Grand Inquisitor condemns him for giving people freedom. And we will become the same way. And we will not be Orthodox at all. We will simply be another hypermoralist sect.